Yeah, right. He he did come on the radio and say like, "This isn't working." Yeah, no shit, this isn't working. <laughs> Everyone knew. <laughs> yeah, even people overtaking him were probably laughing at him. <laughs> yeah, what is it? What is he doing? <laughs> Hello and welcome back. to another episode with F1 fan fiction for those who are new here we are a podcast about F1 for F1 fans brought to you by F1 fans it's it's going to be casual here don't expect anything serious it's fun it's casual as you would talk to your friends and time and again we bring you interviews with racers as well getting into it we are your hosts i am akash and i'm saran and let's start uh, let's start this race uh, turkish grand prix Uh, I think like the second or the third time we've come here, but uh, some livery changes yesterday. Red Bull, uh, those uh, uh, yep. what is it? I think like Red Bull Honda, and then Japanese Arigato. I personally liked it. I mean, yeah. it was a good good livery. Yeah, I loved it. I mean, definitely it was. Uh, you know, Red Bull does not generally ever change their brand colors. Like I haven't seen Red Bull running yes. special liveries a lot. generally speaking and uh, i think this was a very well executed one uh, it's it's sad that like idly uh, this was going to be the week of the japanese gp which would you know they would be running this yes. livery over there and that would have been a grand event for sure but uh, we didn't have that so at least this which was a you know awesome tribute to honda i think uh, honda has been through a lot right and f1 ever since they got back and as as ritual they are leaving as soon as they are winning so <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah but i hope like their all their ip stuff whatever gets transferred to red bull yep uh, mm-hmm. it it helps them continuing on their winning streak um uh, that they are having i mean i see the best part was with livery changes and everything perez was back on fire yesterday so yeah that's got to be something yep i was a little worried actually because you know generally speaking so if you remember mercedes back in germany uh, when they were running that mm-hmm, special mm-hmm. livery for you know that they, they had some like 100 yeah, years yeah. or 75 years something yeah, 75 years were in suspenders as if everyone's going to be a bartender at an october fest yes i remember that <laughs> <laughs> yeah they were running some <laughs> that's true that's right yeah and like it was a disaster right like hamilton was i don't know what he was doing it crashed into <laughs> the barriers and stuff and uh, yeah but so i was a little worried that red bull might you know suffer the same fate like a lot of teams have gone through this before but i think they finally broke that curse of special deliveries and you know actually yeah, got yeah. one of the best results for them i guess yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. in this season two three much. finish great points on the table yeah 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 definitely i mean and and coming back to perez right like I sort of felt like he's lost his mojo. I was expecting he's starting P6. Mm-hmm. He's not going to do well. Hamilton's going to overtake take him at some yep. point. But man, that battle between him and Hamilton was just so brilliant to watch. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, uh it was first of all like you know Hamilton was on a charge like he was cutting through the field. Uh Sunoda had given him some trouble I guess before but <laughs> otherwise it was pretty much easy passing for him for most yes. people and then Perez was obviously a roadblock for him as such <laughs> and yeah Perez did his job very well like uh he's good in rain he's good at tire management he is uh, he is. and uh, he defended you know Hamilton very well and that whole thing if you remember right when uh, Hamilton like pushed him i think he was going to give him a surprise pit stop <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, i mean i thought i thought like sure you're fighting out and then all of a sudden you decided you wanted to pit man what the, what what were you thinking <laughs> yeah that was really funny that would actually you know like it it felt a lot like you know if you remember what we were talking about uh, a couple episodes back that it felt like speed racer to me where <laughs> it, i i i can imagine yes. like it being like people being okay with if you just push your opponent into the pit stop and that being like a fair thing yeah. to gain an advantage <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 i mean but overall i think it was a good weekend for red bull i mean they've they've they're only 36 points behind um mercedes now i think like mm-hmm. if perez keeps up with this performance 
Yeah, it should be it should be a good uh, season for even the constructor championship. But uh, let's see. Yeah, but I think like Perez needs to deliver this throughout the season and not just in select few yeah. races. That's what is happening currently, because as you said, right, thirty six points is still a wide gap. Like even after today's race, it's still thirty six points, and then there aren't really a lot of races to go yeah, by, yeah. you know, in the season. And uh, I mean, from the perspective of uh the teams constructors is everything right because the prize money uh, is, is degraded by this so i think red bull kind of uh, yeah i don't think they would be able to win the championship uh, but yeah max definitely probably might who knows yeah 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 oh i'm totally rooting for it i mean like your eighth world title championships shouldn't come to you easy as some of the others yeah. have come so yeah totally, totally. Yep. this should be like a fight till the last race i feel um and i think i think we're going to get that like looking at how things are going right yes. like last before this race we had hamilton ahead by how many three points one point yeah. i something like yeah, that something like that yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and now it's just six points which is again not a lot like it's still very close to call yeah, neck and, and neck. uh yeah I'm 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 loving it. I'm loving every single race of it, and it's 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 nice. And I think suddenly it seems like they have gotten cleaner as well. The both of them actually, they didn't have to fight each other today. So yeah, yeah. who knows? <laughs> you and might I mean, still guessing, see that. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true too. I mean, it it's it's bound to come, right? Like he if he hadn't taken that engine mm-hmm. change, uh-huh. um. Or a power unit upgrade yep. sort of thing, right? Like he would he would have started P one. This would have been a totally different result. Oh, for sure. Today. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that 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 neck and neck fighting is going to continue all the way into the season, and and I hope it's going to be like I forget what year it was, but like year, there was this this two thousand seven six seven eight sort of year where Massa mm-hmm. was leading the world championship and Hamilton won the world drivers championship. On the last race in Brazil, um, oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I recall this. Yeah, it's yeah. just such. Uh, <laughs> so Massa crosses his finish line, and everyone's cheering, blah blah blah, and then Hamilton crosses and overtakes right before the last corner. Folks, go check it out. It's, it's. I hope, I hope it's some sort of like a thrilling experience till their last race. I like really that. hope so. so yeah, <laughs> um, but I, I feel like Max is is again on some next level, right? So yeah. It's it's bound to happen. Yeah, I think this season he has been uh been very mature. It's it's quite interesting to see that. Like, uh, he seems almost zen. I would say like every time I've never seen him flustered through the race, even on the radios and everything. He's quite calm most of the times. He's having a fun time. That's what it seems like. Yeah, <laughs> always. Yeah. and uh, yeah. I mean, uh, he's he's taking had a this... few uh, cheeky radio messages or like post interview messages as well, right? Like fun ones. <laughs> oh yes, I think today, right? Uh, when uh, he was asked the question, like, uh, you know, what was the most difficult thing today? for you and he basically said staying awake <laughs> because <laughs> yeah from his perspective i get it he was pretty much just managing his tires throughout the race yeah. and uh, he i don't think he like fought anybody at all <laughs> no yeah yesterday was him driving around uh, him driving around <laughs> turkish grand prix on a track day right just like yeah, out there on a, on a sunday <laughs> yeah. yeah felt like that um speaking of red bull Lando's ahead of Perez in in uh, standings, so that's got to be something. Yeah. Uh, again, that goes to show, right, where Perez needs to pick up his game because if Lando in a far inferior car can beat him, you know, uh, through the season, that's that's something to think about because uh, Perez is. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like even after uh, Verstappen performing so well. Uh, this mm-hmm. season, uh, they are still 36 points behind. And yeah, uh, for some reason, uh, Red Bull just aren't able to get the second driver that they really need. They, they don't have a, you know, Red Bull version of Botas per se. Yes. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of sad for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although, although the fun part, moving away from like drivers on Red Bull, um, 
is at least some other people on the track are happy seeing Red Bull win, if not Perez. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, Perez definitely needs to step up his game. And I guess like that cameraman is going to be super exhilarated if he sees both Max and Perez killing it on the track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was quite funny to see, right? Like he was celebrating the quick pit stop by Red Bull. <laughs> it was, it it felt like he had like placed a bet on, uh, you know, sub two second or yeah, uh, right? something probably. like that. <laughs> and I think he 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 reckoned that he's probably winning that bet. So yeah, <laughs> why not? Yeah, I guess like he's been betting on Perez all this while and he he he'd not been doing that good and then finally <laughs> some some money won from Max's quick stop so sure. <laughs> yeah. Something something like that. Ah well, I mean, let's hope uh, the the Perez version the Botas version of Red Bull bounces back. Uh in terms of like Botas himself, I think like as soon as he's learned he's gonna replace Finn Kimi in mm-hmm. Alpha. I mean, he's he's somehow found his mojo. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I I guess like he's making James and Toto and folks like regret not having to continue him. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I think like. Today's performance of Botas was uh, amazing. I mean, he did nothing wrong. Uh, absolutely commanded the race right from the start. Uh, managed his tires. Like, there was no issues. I I don't think, like, he even had, like, you know, a, a moment in the whole race where he... I think just one. Yeah. Actually, just one moment I'd seen. And other than that, he was just flawless. And uh, I think, like, he... It was small twitch, that's about it. But still, like, you know, uh, ah, okay. like just otherwise, a lot of times, like if you saw how the race went by, like the conditions were terrible, right? Like a lot of people were making mistakes. Uh, like Hamilton was making mistakes as well. I think even Verstappen later on was having some issues with the steering, if you uh, if you had heard on the radio, where uh, I think he, he was managing an issue where his steering was like uh, moving left. <laughs> so, mm. Yeah, so he too was having quite a few moments here and there, uh, you know, just going over the curbs and things like that. But uh, yeah, Potas really just, you know, delivered through and through and yeah, yeah got that P1, which he totally deserves, I think. Yeah, yesterday was a day where I think like everyone was just anxious that Mercedes doesn't fuck him up <laughs> on, <laughs> on his race. Him. <laughs> Like again, like that Sunday briefing. How do we, how do we bully Botas today? <laughs> sort of situation. He's gonna lead. Yeah. Let's just mess up with his right <laughs> front tire this time. <laughs> yeah, thankfully nothing of the, that sorts happened. He had, you know, a calm, proper pit stop as well. Like they yeah. didn't decide to pull a Monaco on him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. then blame him for it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Totally, man. But I feel like there's something funky going on, at least in in Hamilton's garage, right? Like, to be honest, I mean, again, we've we've said this again, at least, you know, we we don't like Hamilton as much on the racetrack, but I feel like he's just changing our opinion race and race again. Like, yesterday was yet another brilliant drive from him, showing that experience of these, all these years, and, you know, him knowing his cockpit way more than anyone mm-hmm. else, right? He could have been on the podium, but uh, I think like the, the the team decisions got the better of uh, the better of the situation. Yeah, I think this is this exactly exemplifies you know what happened last race in the sense that if you remember what we were talking about, that Lando should have listened to his team. Yes, and yes. Uh, this is exactly what happened, right? Like Hamilton actually uh, Mercedes was. Uh, a lot of times they told him to come in into the pits. He was like, no, I'm not going to do that. He kept doing that. And then finally he decided to listen to his team and, you know, what him, you know, what that got him P5 instead of a P3 that he could have gotten. And yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, I mean, given Hamilton's track record, uh, Mercedes should have known that if anyone can do it, it's Hamilton. Yes. Uh, and they should have just trusted his experience. And I mean, he's a seven-time world champion, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> man, for, 
for all for all the shenanigans he's pulled he's limped his way across the finish line on three tires <laughs> exactly so it definitely if, if there is anyone who knows his car more than anyone and then, yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's sad i'm i'm actually kind of uh, i mean not too bad at least you got p5 so i'm yeah. glad that it, it didn't happen that you know uh, max got a huge advantage because you know as we just talked about i want this to be at you know right till the last lap and uh, yeah i don't want to know before that <laughs> who's going to win the championship yeah yeah i think like even in the post race interviews hamilton was was still on his statement yeah. like mm-hmm. i should have mm-hmm. stayed out and um, yeah some some good some good points lost probably uh it could have been closer to that uh, driver's yeah. championship as well so overall i think there's slight off the mark management on uh team engineer or race engineer side mm-hmm. um otherwise i think like hamilton was was definitely up there on the pole yeah um, yep yep well on on the note of like radio messages it was it was good to see botas's post race winning radio messages like i think like everyone jumped on and it was a it was a different sort of <laughs> yes uh, bordas it's james congratulations i think <laughs> i i was like bordas it's james you need to switch position sort of thing <laughs> imagine still oh, hearing man. that after you won the race <laughs> <laughs> just before he finish you know crosses the finish line like you know while three is james <laughs> you need to concede your position <laughs> oh man and then they just like you know pull a kill switch and just you know turn off his car remotely <laughs> <laughs> oh don't give them ideas you we know someone's listening to us i think their sunday boat as ragging is going to add have this on their list now <laughs> Yeah, I think it's gonna escalate very soon. I think it's going to the next level now. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I'm really glad that you know this being probably. I think this might just be Botas's last victory, uh, because I mean, uh, there are not a lot of races remaining, uh, and uh, it's not like he's gonna be winning races one season, uh, Alfa Romeo. Uh, That's so true. yeah, it's. America, I, I'm glad. I mean, the next. few races are americas americas are stronger suit for yeah. red bull red bull yep uh, yep for our reason red bull so mm-hmm. yeah so i'm glad that you know he grabbed this opportunity and like mercedes obviously okay. denied him russia which i'm still bitter about honestly speaking yes. but uh, yeah i'm glad but as for this one and i think and, he... and from his vantage point i mean he gets a better lead on to norris for that third yep. position in, yep. in drivers championship right so yep. yeah <laughs> some see. some I mean, really good defensing uh-huh. uh defenses that i saw uh, today was by yuki if you saw in the start of the race where he finally <laughs> yes <laughs> held off hamilton for so long yes. you know i was for a change impressed by yuki because uh yuki has been very disappointing for a lot of races recently yeah. and uh, i had no hopes that he could defend hamilton at all but yeah i, I mean think, even uh, he didn't have any hopes of from himself <laughs> to right like last weekend or two weekends back he was commenting on the fact like he's surprised why he's still continuing next year so i don't think anyone's had any hopes right right yeah but yeah i think he was just trying to impress dr marco that you know uh, <laughs> uh you know i i have the seat for a reason you know it's not just the honda money that you're getting <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it would have it would have been fun if if that that battle would have lasted a bit longer but mm. uh yeah overall it, it was it was still a nice battle i think like but, I, pr- probably i don't remember earlier seasons but like this seasons this seasons overtakes have been quite yeah. a lot from mm-hmm. the the outside line like quite yeah. a lot have been from the outside line Yeah this 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 particular overtake was just simply beautiful like Hamilton yeah, yeah wow around the outside uh, in those conditions you know first of all that to keep that in mind it was yes. awesome yeah. <laughs> yeah But overall I think like both uh, Yuki and then Gasly Gasly was also having some sort of an okay day um Yeah, he was having a weird day, right? Like first of all, he punted Alonso, you know, in lap yeah. one, which 
he got a penalty for it and uh, like i i had questions about the penalty right after the race but yes. when i went over the footage it's it's quite clear that you know if we ask the question that you know whether gasly could have avoided the uh, collision the answer is yes definitely yes and you know why was i mean what's what's this recording that that you i mean i haven't seen this so what's what's the deal oh no i mean uh, i was just looking at the onboards of uh, okay. uh, of gasly so basically uh, if you see perez's uh, you know perspective his his right. uh, camera uh, it it's very clear that gasly had a lot of space on his left uh, where perez was but there was a lot of space in between them where uh, even though gasly didn't have to like concede the corner to uh, alonso mm-hmm, definitely mm-hmm. not uh, but he definitely had to try and avoid the collision which he failed to do it. so in in you know that perspective it it makes sense that he got that penalty yeah interesting okay i guess like maybe that's what then stewards saw and then that's that's mm. why he he got the penalty that he got cuz yeah from from that moment of collision and a few replays that they played mm-hmm. my thought was same like why why did he need that penalty or like why was that penalty given but okay a more uh, analytic view probably uh, says a b- bigger story then right and i think right after that alonso was probably like the stuff and just uh, took the revenge on mick <laughs> yeah i guess like alonso was in a bumper car mood yesterday right like either getting <laughs> bumped or like him bumping <laughs> yeah i think i was super excited uh, after qualification because you know uh, alonso was p5 and i was hoping that you know he would have one of his fantastic starts and yes. you know like be there at p3 or something uh but uh, unfortunately after the incident with gasly he was nowhere through the race pretty much uh we saw some battles towards the end with george but yeah that's for like you know scraps at the end so <laughs> does it really matter also you mentioned mick i mean my just two cents there is mm-hmm. i i again i missed qualification but like i saw it after fact as an after fact mm-hmm. and I thought something again would have happened which made him go into Q2 but then that was again mm-hmm. pure pace man like yep with, that was quite surprising a Haas on a pure pace situation brilliant yeah right who, who would have thought yeah. Q2 for ha Haas is yeah, yeah unthinkable very honestly uh, but I'm glad I'm glad that you know he he uh, is kind of having these uh, you know outstanding performances which kind of show that he does have some potential given a better yeah. ride uh, i think he can prove his worth yeah i don't know if there is some other optics that they aren't showing for nikita like he's just probably still an a hole but uh, <laughs> i feel like there's there's these other media optics that that we get mm-hmm. to see for mick where he he goes into the garage and like fist bombs or high fives like every single person <laughs> and yeah i mean it it's just like it, it, for me it shows mm-hmm. sportsmanship spirit and you know how how you as a person are that you, you sort of uh, value every person's effort and then you know make them feel for it as well so i think like he's a good human too yeah yeah definitely uh i think overall through the paddock people I mean have a connection with him for you know multiple yeah. reasons I'm sure uh, being the son of Michael yeah. Schumacher itself is something you've been I, attending parties since you were a kid so yeah yeah and I think not just that I think a lot of people also you know had a lot of uh, admiration for Michael and I think what obviously pro- yes. obviously and pro- what mm-hmm. happens is like it people associate uh, those yeah. sentiments you know by proxy Yeah. and i think definitely because of that a lot more people have like a, a soft spot for him you know as Fair such and enough. and i think we definitely do see that uh, in fact right after the race alonso came by and hugged him and said sorry you know about hitting him <laughs> on the track <laughs> <laughs> which is yeah, quite a nice moment between both of those uh, guys so uh, yeah kudos again yeah. <laughs> i feel like these seniors should never leave I mean, yeah. <laughs> they, I don't know if it's just nostalgia because we've been seeing them since like since we see the sport, 
Right. But uh, there was this, there was this uh, more there was this comment from Alonso after like FP one, FP two, where he was like, "I'm hoping to still drive a race a car when I'm fifty two." I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll see that. Yeah, that would be awesome, right? Oh, talking about uh, veterans, uh, Vettel was doing something real. experimentation during rains this uh, he was this uh, race. I, no that makes sense he was on free practice for yesterday so <laughs> <laughs> exactly who the hell like it was so weird i even heard the radio was like the uh, the engineer asks him like you know we are thinking about softs what, what do you think he's like no no let's do mediums and you know like all, all the other teams are like idiots who are going out on enters <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I think he's he's uh, he's just on track to fill Kimi's shoes uh, on on being the shenanigan puller on the track. Yeah, uh, I think they were trying to do some. You know, uh, they were hoping that the track would dry up or something would happen that you know that might give them an advantage. I think. Uh, it still doesn't make sense to me they were at a comfortable p10 uh, you know they could had gotten that one point uh, i don't understand what they were trying because it was not like they were in a position uh, that it, it just doesn't make sense to me very honestly like yeah i don't yeah, i, I, don't, I, know. I, I don't know I, what was going yeah, on yeah no no you're, you're on point <laughs> like it was probably something on their radar monitor where they were expecting the tracks to dry up Maybe they were just not <laughs> on the Turkish yeah. Grand Prix. They are probably looking at Austin Grand Prix or the Rain kind of stuff. I, who knows? Who knows? Hey, I'm still giving them the benefit of doubt, right? So, Vettel <laughs> uh, was on board. They had fun. Yeah. He played snakes and ladders <laughs> on the track. So sure. <laughs> it is so funny he couldn't even get to his garage because you know towards the end when he was getting back into the pits he was spinning even there. It was it was so funny, man. Yeah, right. He he did come on the radio and say like, "This isn't working." Yeah, no shit, this isn't working. <laughs> Everyone knew. <laughs> yeah, even people overtaking him were probably laughing at him. <laughs> yeah, what is it? What is he doing? <laughs> uh, oh man! And then some people were even deciding to punt Vettel out. Like, sure, you don't. I oh wait 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 hang on there are multiple thoughts brewing now. I think Vettel was going mm-hmm. for the best ever Sabinella yesterday by getting those tires on. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. I think, right? I think like, that makes sense. Yep, yep, yep. I think he was trying to get, to get the one. best best three yeah. sixty because I think there were a couple three sixties recently, right? Yeah. Like I think uh, during uh, qualification or free practice, if I remember correctly. Uh, Verstappen had a really nice 360 where he did a perfect 360 and you know went straight ahead after that. Yeah. So I think he he probably like uh, thought that it's a challenge that he needs to beat. Yeah. So and he had, and he probably had a major FOMO as well, like right. So <laughs> let's just get the best tires for the. the <laughs> it just killed his race, right? Like the 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 two pit stops right after Obviously. each other. <laughs> He was plumb last at I think nineteen or and, something. And was... when that didn't work, I probably I think like he probably signaled science on his way while he overtook him. Like just just punt into me, you know. Hey, <laughs> yeah, that that was a little cheeky by science. I yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. know why he punted him. Like uh, he could have taken him the next corner. Very honestly, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But I feel like I feel like overall. I mean, speaking of science and, and some thoughts on Ferrari here, mm-hmm. I feel like overall the Ferrari morale is probably like playing underconfident because even mm-hmm. last race, uh, yep. science was was probably almost going to win the race, and they told him we are aiming for P five. <laughs> Yesterday too, yeah. sure, it, it it wasn't that easy of a condition for for Leclerc, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, they could have gotten at least him on the podium somewhere somehow. So I'm guessing like probably there's some some sort of like an underconfident play happening in the garage uh, at Ferrari. Yeah, I think yeah they still aren't there in terms of you know performance upgrades and things like that. That they still are not able to you know uh, make those crazy plays which will give them those crazy results. I think yet. uh they they are i think still trying to be very conservative in terms of not trying to 
uh do some wild moves uh but i think in that prospect i but like in that effort what happens is they probably lose out on uh some good results yeah. maybe i don't know they could have done better i do agree uh exactly. i don't know what <laughs> i mean it's a difficult decision it's always you know it's uh like yeah, i mean hindsight and always, us not yeah, being yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. exactly but uh, it's easier for us to say than than you know <laughs> but hey that's our job we right. need to yep. bitch about these people so <laughs> <laughs> yeah if we don't bitch about it who will right so. exactly exactly but uh, i think like science and hamilton were the only people yesterday playing overtakes uh, mm-hmm. everyone else was just going around Um, yeah otherwise it felt pretty much it it was a dry race right like i mean okay it, it was a wet race but it was a dry race come on uh, in the sense that <laughs> nothing was going on like there were some good fights yes at places there was some excitement looming around in the race but overall it was kind yeah. of a boring race uh, yeah like everybody some, was some being so you know safe like i think everybody yeah. was hoping for a safety car and because of that obviously they were driving slowly and that's oh, no safety car moronic right <laughs> <laughs> like you're hoping to get a safety car so drive yeah. safer and then the circle of yeah i think um, because of that i think it it kind of became a little boring and any hope that hamilton could have done something was completely eliminated by mercedes they made sure that <laughs> <laughs> he his challenge is like completely thwarted and uh <laughs> put him in p5 there's this interesting message from ferrari garage as well right like to leclerc oh yeah he was <laughs> yeah so for folks right like this is this is interesting message where leclerc asks his engineers at his at this phase what position should we expect and his engineer goes yeah if we keep botas behind p1 Uh, no doy <laughs> <laughs> oh but that was such a snarky reply man that poor guy lakla he's like fighting the rain and those terrible conditions and you know asking a genuine question to his engineer and his engineer is trolling him <laughs> with some bullshit answers <laughs> yeah it was yeah it was fun though like i think it it uh made me happy on my sunday morning so i'm i'm glad uh, the race that we had overall i think it was uh, yeah the rain made it uh, you know i think rain has become like now a signature for uh, turkey isn't it like last yeah, year's yeah. race and this year's race again yeah At least i think damp conditions or something yes yep we had the whole inter slick thing right last year uh, i think uh, hamilton won from p6 or something like that last year uh, with the same thing he drove like some crazy uh, number of laps on his intermediates and basically won them down so that uh, they became like slicks uh, and won the race so i was hoping for that to repeat but again mercedes why why <laughs> yeah yeah but you know what like this season because of like multiple tracks having such conditions um what's got then interesting is we are seeing quite a lot of open strategies with tire mm-hmm. management which earlier probably to like a to to like a viewer who weren't that obvious but now you actually see that hey we need to pit because we need to change tires because you know the track conditions going this way or that way which sort of makes it more engaging with races mm-hmm. like this or you know last race or two um so so it's good to see that these weather conditions are are playing for the better for for these uh, for the spectators at this point you know what i have i have a real theory right now with me hear me What's out okay. <laughs> okay okay so i think bernie eccleston uh, has colluded with these oil companies to uh, okay. cause global warming so that okay. we see climate change <laughs> and with the climate change we will have these exciting races and thus you know okay. formula 1 uh, wins so <laughs> that, there you I, have it. i i'm i'm pro <laughs> spreading this as a conspiracy theory dude i feel like this this is this this can get some good traction 
cash is king at a whole new level oh man yeah but but i think isn't that true like if like not not if we know that climate change is happening and for sure we are yeah. going to see more and more rain and everything at different locations when especially like when if you see at the calendar it's it's like you know they all over the world obviously and they are also traveling across continents and during different seasons as well so yeah. we're going to going to see even more races which are like affected by rain and like these extreme weather conditions for sure i guess hey listeners if if you don't want to hear us talk about global warming go check why vettel had the helmet that he had ah. on. go yep <laughs> <laughs> right. that, that is a good video you sent to me yeah. yesterday yeah. yeah it's pretty cool right i think and especially i think uh, again like going on to the theme of uh, him uh you know fighting for the causes that he believes in is great again to see because yeah. um again turkey i think there's this whole uh controversy going on there about uh, i forget what the name of the sea is but i think they're building a pipeline there which is going to cause a lot of environmental damage and i think that that helmet was basically to fight against that <sighs> well coming back to the race <laughs> today uh there's some other weird things that were happening okon deciding to pull up perez i think he was just trying to see how long he can go and then before <laughs> he realized the race was over like oh oh man i should have put it i didn't put it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was thinking that he might just keep doing laps and not realize that the race is over till his like you know tires are actually gone and he's like just you know scraping his rims on the tarmac. Dude, I was so worried for his tires. Probably just, they'd just burst at some point. But I guess like the rain and wet conditions help to stay them intact. But like his Did tires, you see the photos completely. Though? Yeah, his his tires are completely sandpapered. He was just. <laughs> so flat <laughs> there's nothing left there pretty much i was like right? really surprised how how were they like you know intact at that point <laughs> it made no sense to me right right <laughs> and then on the other hand like i don't know where some other drivers were like i i no, did no, even on the realize. other hand ricardo dude like what the hell was mclaren doing giving him those uh, enters so fast into the race yeah. like i think yeah, yeah, yeah. what was it lap 20 or something where he put, yeah, where they put it like he was the first one to get in he was the first <laughs> one to get in that effectively killed his race after that pretty much yeah, i don't know obviously. like uh, yeah <laughs> cuz cuz everyone else is is good on their tire management cuz everyone's got those slicks on and they yeah. can go for the long run right and now you've lost position way early into the race it's not going to be that easy for you to keep bouncing back Uh, and i don't think like he can pull his signature ricardo late breaking move on nope. a track like this right nope. so yeah no way. pretty much uh, spent at that point yep <laughs> poor fellow again i think he's back to his struggles again i guess like once he's done with his high <laughs> probably probably <laughs> mclaren thought that like this is too much i i do have some hopes from him at least mm. for uh, for mexico if mm-hmm. not if not austin so yeah let's see let's see how the mclaren bounces back but but i was saying like i i just didn't notice some of the other drivers yesterday like latifi gio mm-hmm. russell probably yeah because of that one one move there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um but yeah the other drivers are also sort of missing yesterday gio was he racing i i thought that he was not there <laughs> see, yeah exactly I didn't, i didn't even hear about him i didn't see him right like if alpha wasn't there yesterday i wouldn't have noticed <laughs> yeah though there are some rumors going on about alpha right i think uh, something about uh, andretti motorsports seat. yeah yeah i think they are probably going to make uh, an investment into a uh, sauber and i think it's going to become andretti sauber and no, no more going to be alfa romeo from 2022 i guess i think so but i think we'll know for sure in texas but yeah let's see would be interesting i think some end car you know money coming yeah, in for fun probably like to see that sauber name again so mm-hmm. yep i do agree because essentially the team is sauber it's not really alfa romeo alfa romeo is just paying the money for 
you know the rights for naming the team that's about it that's the only you know involvement that they have in the whole program so yeah and plus like i feel like this is a better way to invest yourself into the sport and like get probably one of your drivers rather mm-hmm. than just being like guan yu shao where it's like yeah here's 30 million get our driver in i mean <laughs> compete right. yourself a bit more right like either yep. be like papa stroll buy the team out or you know <laughs> get honda as a whole engine yeah, something like that where it's yeah. like oh you've actually committed enough mm-hmm. to be on the sport yeah makes sense i think uh, overall i think istanbul park was uh, the right mix I, i'm really sad that we didn't go to suzuka uh, you know oh yeah suzuka oh, yeah. Totally. japanese fans are the best fans very honestly like the all the kind of costumes and everything that they wear and you know the whole environment at suzuka is really awesome and i think the whole you know it being the last race for honda with red bull and especially the yes. result that they got yes. you know i wish it happened yes. at suzuka but if not there i think istanbul park is something that i take sure <laughs> you know second sure yeah 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 so yeah i have no complaints about that yeah and also like i think like all drivers all fans everyone love uh, the the mm-hmm. suzuka track too so sure sure uh i guess on that note probably we'll wind it up here this has been a bit more relaxed episode uh quite uh Quite, the rains uh, you know has made me mellow today I yeah, guess. <laughs> yeah 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 <sighs> folks uh, you can catch us on any streaming platform that you get your uh, podcast from if you've made it this far thank you thank you for listening to the whole episode and being here with us episode after episode if you have already subscribed to us at all our socials again thank you if you haven't keep checking us out and if you do like where this is going yeah let's uh, let's uh, subscribe until until the next race uh, keep checking out our shorties on uh, on our socials um, and make sure to catch our previous episodes as well until the next race these are your hosts signing off bye bye